Okay. The next item on the agenda is the first reading of an ordinance to establish a rental housing dispute resolution, otherwise called mandatory mitigation program, and consideration of other housing subcommittee recommendations. I'm going to go to staff now for their report. Good afternoon, President Arnold, members of the board, Brian Crawford with the county CDA. Uh, before we get started, I want to call your attention to two supplemental memorandums. One is entitled Supplemental, Su Supplemental Memo Tuesday, December 5th, which includes uh, additional correspondence that you should have in your packet. And then a second, which came out very recently, uh, which is another Supplemental Memo, also dated December 5th, and uh, that has additional correspondence that was received up until uh, noon uh, today. Okay, thank you. And with that, I'll keep it brief considering uh, the amount of anticipated testimony that I think we'll receive today. So I'll turn it over to Lily Thomas of our staff for a brief presentation on the two principal policy options that have been under review by our board housing subcommittee and which are the focus of our discussions this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Lily Thomas with the Marin County Community Development Agency. I'm joined today by Debbie LaRue, it's a planner uh, with me. Uh, I'd also like to welcome Molly Crone sitting back here. She's a new planner who started with us yesterday in the Housing and Federal Grants Division. I'm also joined by uh, Justin Phillips, uh, or sorry, Justin Bigelow and Ayark Phillips, who are with Goldfarb and Lippman, um, the county's outside attorneys who drafted this ordinance and will be able to answer questions about this specific ordinance as well as um, what other jurisdictions around the Bay Area are doing. Um, so as a brief background, um, your board on August 1st of this year held a hearing on our work plan to preserve housing affordability and prevent displacement. And um, from that board meeting, two policy options were referred back to the subcommittee for additional review and um, you asked the subcommittee to come back with a recommendation prior to the end of this year. Um, and just for the public's um, knowledge, that subcommittee includes Supervisor Connolly and Supervisor Rice. Can I interrupt one yes. minute? There is a message from Supervisor Rice that she is uh, coming back. Her plane has landed, so she expects to be here sometime during this hearing. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Can we ask people to turn their cell phones off? No. Great. Sorry. Um, so the two policies that were referred to the Housing Subcommittee included the Rental Housing Dispute Resolution Program, um, commonly known as Mandatory Mediation, and the Residential Landlord and Tenant Relations Ordinance, also known as Just Cause for Evictions. Um, and so in the past, uh, in, the, in the following four months, the subcommittee met and reviewed those policies and heard from a number of experts in the local rental housing market, including staff from our own environmental health um, housing inspection program. Uh, we heard from folks at the district attorney's consumer protection um, unit that does our current mediation program. Um, we heard from Legal Aid of Marin about the services that they offer for tenants and around, uh, specifically around eviction um, protection. Uh, Goldfarb and Lippman attorneys spoke and talked about kind of what other jurisdictions around the Bay Area are doing and a little bit about the legal framework um, for those ordinances. And then we had, they held some meetings with tenants and landlords, including a meeting with landlords here at the Civic Center um, where mediation was discussed um, as, we as well as um, just cause for eviction as one of the possibilities that would come out of that recommendation. In addition, there was a couple of other meetings that they held with staff um, to explore these options. And out of that series of meetings, um, three, recommend three options were considered by the subcommittee. Um, one of them was for uh, the rental housing dispute resolution only, and that was intended to address displacement and housing instability in our rental community caused by um, significant rent increases um, with the goal of facilitating constructive conversations in a neutral and accountable environment, a place where 
housing providers and tenants would be able to air that, uh, you know, have those constructive conversations. Um, and that uh, the ordinance that was discussed would um, apply to rent increases of more than 5% within a 12 month period. Um, just to be clear, it does not restrict um, a landlord's right to raise the rent. It is not a rent control. It's just a place where um, the participants in good faith could have a conversation around, around that rent increase. Um, and there, there, no specific settlement would be required that would come <coughs> out of that, but it would just be, a play, again, a, an opportunity to have a, a neutral conversation. Um, and some um, folks are find that because there's no binding um, result that there can be some frustration around this type of ordinance. Um, the second um, option that was considered was a residential landlord and tenant relations ordinance only, also known as um, just cause for eviction. And again, that was intended to address housing instability um, specif specifically caused when um, somebody's lease is terminated, their rental agreement is terminated, when they are, there's no issues with their, you know, they've been a good tenant. Um, so this was intended to um, provide some more stability in the rental housing market <coughs> for folks. Um, and again, it would fully retain a landlord's right to terminate a lease for valid reasons such as non-payment of rent or other lease violations. Um, uh, just cause does not prevent a or limit rent increases. The third option that was considered was a combination of those two ordinances. So a rental housing dispute resolution and a resi residential landlord and tenant relations ordinance um, combined. And so really this would be intended to address both the issues of steep rent increases and um, lease terminations. And if, to, you know, if they're looked at together, then they can be reinforce each other so that you know, you're not just considering one or the other. Um, and again, these were intended to address the you know, steep rent increases and housing instil instability. Um, so from um, those three considerations, the Housing Subcommittee's recommendation today is to conduct a first reading of a rental housing dispute resolution, mandatory mediation <laughs> ordinance, and schedule a merit hearing for December 12th at 5.30. Um, you'll also, uh, staff would like to draw your attention to um, the addendum to the ordinance, which included three options for your consideration for today or the future um, as, as part of that ordinance, and that included authorization of an administration fee if this is needed in the future. Currently we're not proposing that a fee would be required, but if in the future it would, um, that, um, that option in the addendum would um, allow a, a fee. Um, also a rental dwelling unit registration option, and this is really to get at the question that we keep hearing about, and is actually in a number of the letters that we received today that um, there is a lack of really clear understanding about what's going on in the rental housing market. We have data from the census, which is outdated. We have some Department of Finance data, but again, it's really not accurate in reflecting, about, uh, reflecting what's happening in the market today. And so with uh, uh, the rental registration, we'd be able to collect that data and your board would be able to respond in real time to what was going on in the rental market. Um, and then the final um, additional provision that we're asking for your recommendation on is establishment of relocation assistance um, for bad faith evictions. And that, again, these three um, options could be considered for on the, uh, as the current part of the resolution or in the future at your, at your pleasure. And then finally, the housing subcommittee's recommendation is to defer consideration of a residential landlord and tenant relations ordinance for 12 months. And um, I'm sure that Supervisor Connolly as representing the subcommittee can, can talk a little bit, we'll talk a little bit more about their recommendations. Um, and that um, concludes my presentation for today. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, does the board, do the board members have any questions? Yes. I'll ask a few, sure. and Lily, thank you uh, to you and the rest of the staff for the, the hard work on this. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. So just to reiterate um, for the public and my colleagues, um, the addendum immediately following the proposed resolution um, is not something that the subcommittee has vetted yet. So these are just possible proposals for down the road. And, and certainly if anyone has any reaction to those, um, that would be much appreciated. Um, some additional questions um, have come up. We've been receiving a lot of public uh, feedback. One is um, the range of housing stock that would be covered by the mandatory mediation uh, provision, uh, e.g., in particular, single-family units, JDs, et cetera. So if you could elaborate on that. So okay. I am going to have ask Justin to answer the question specific, uh, sorry, ask Eric to answer the question specifically about um, the applicability to um, single family homes as it relates to um, Costa Hawkins, because I know that some questions have come up around that, but right. as we have proposed it, um, that it have a, as wide applicability as possible, you know, so that this will apply to both multifamily and single family as well as accessory dwelling units. Thank you. Um, again, I'm Eric Phillips from Goldfarb and Lippman. Um, thank you for having us here uh, this afternoon. So to elaborate in the response to your question, Supervisor Conley, um, as Lili mentioned during the overview, um, all rental units in an incorporated Marin County would be covered as the ordinance is currently proposed. Um, it does not function as a rent control measure. It functions as um, an opportunity for landlords and tenants to discuss the terms of potential rent increases. Um, so because it doesn't ul ultimately limit the amount of rent that a landlord seeks to choose for their unit, it's not preempted by the Costa Hawkins Act or other um, state law that governs landlord-tenant interactions. Um, having said that, there are other policy considerations that the board can decide exactly what breadth of units they want covered, um, though in its current iteration, again, it covers all rental units in unincorporated Marin County. And, and sorry, I'd just like yes. to point out that in Table 1, we're, our, it's approximately 8,000 um, units that would be covered as, as, con as it's currently written. Um, second question is um, there's been input on issues like who would pay for the mediation, how would it be conducted, and the like. Um, the good news, I think, and you can elaborate, is we have a current system uh, in place for mediation services through our district attorney's office. And the indications we've received from them through the <coughs> subcommittee work is um, that would be in a position to handle a new program like this. Is that right? Yes. So currently, um, there are our consumer protection division of the DA's office offers um, mediation, voluntary mediation for landlords and tenants. And they're, they're, they're indicating, you know, there's uh, ongoing conversations, but they're, at this point they believe that they could um, take on um, this type of mediation um, through their existing staff and with the existing volunteers that they have without having to add any additional staff. Of course, you know, they're, they haven't committed in, you know, until we have structured the ordinance and it's come out. You know, they've commented and provided us feedback. But th the intent at this point is, is that it would be accommodated through the DA's current mediation program. And then depending on the volume, if in the future we needed to augment their staff or help them, we'd be able to do that. And as part of that, we're proposing a timeline. Um, a notice by X day within 30 days, X, Y, and Z happens. Um, and that's consistent with what current protocol is, or how do, how do we come up it, with that? It's a little different than what they're currently doing, but they have reviewed the timelines okay. in the ordinance. Um, actually, we originally had proposed kind of a longer timeline with some of them, and they recommended that we shorten them right. and that they would be able to accommodate that. One of the things that we've heard from other jurisdictions is that it's really important that if there's a mandatory mediation that you be able to respond quickly so that neither the landlord or the tenant is stuck in a limbo situation 
situation that the mediator be able to schedule them and respond to them quickly. And so um, as we had these conversations with the district attorney's office, they, they recommended that we shorten the timelines that we had originally proposed. Great, thanks. Supervisor Radoni. Hi, thank you, uh, thanks for the report. <clears throat> On page one, you referenced additional approaches recommended by the subcommittee. Um, they seem to be really important and as we move forward with this uh, possible ordinance, I'd be interested to uh, hear your comments about how soon those could be incorporated. And these involve around inspections, performance, working with Centerville and Novato, educating the tenants. And I just wondered if you could respond to how soon uh, we could be ready to do some of those or, or what it would take to move into some of those. Well, we've already begun discussions with our environmental health staff on enhancing the programs. We have some ideas, one of which I think is mentioned in the staff report regarding um, creating a performance-based uh, housing code inspection program. Uh, we have not uh, progressed as much with our discussions with the city of San Rafael and Nevado. That would be the next step. But I anticipate we would be in a position to come back to your board with a report on the status of that particular initiative um, within the first quarter of 2018. Okay. And then I would just add that um, number two on that list around the data collection, that is a one of the um, optional items that's considered in the addendum in the ordinance that's in front of you today. Okay, okay, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, secondly, there's reference to data collection throughout your report, and I just wonder, shouldn't we be doing this now if we're gonna start evaluating these changes? And, and how can we kick that off? Or what's the next step related to data collection? Well, that's why we have included that provision um, in the current ordinance as one of the addendum that you could consider to be part of the mandatory mediation. I think that it's important that we um, have accurate data that we are tracking this so that, you know, if in a year, if your board opted to adopt the mandatory mediation, um, ordinance, it would be important that in a year from now that we could evaluate its effectiveness. And so if we don't, we're not, we don't have accurate data, it would be difficult to do that. So that, that's one of the reasons why we have proposed that this be included okay. as, as an option. And then um, could you give me an example of how mandatory mediation would work? For example, I just got a 7% rate increase for my um, residents. How would it work? Walk me through how you see this program working. Okay, so you would um, request a mediation. Uh, one of the, first of all, one of the provisions of the ordinance would be that your landlord would have notified you within 30, you know, once uh, that this um, ordinance was now in effect. We would develop a form and all unincorporated, or all housing providers in unincorporated Marin would have received that form so that they could notify their tenants of their right to request mediation if they had a rent increase of 7%, for example. So the, the tenant would submit that request um, to mediation services, for example, if the DA was acting on our behalf. Um, so they would submit it to them. Um, within two days, if I have my dates right, correct me if I'm wrong as we go through this, within two days, they would respond and notify the housing provider uh, that a request for mediation had been done. And within 10 days of that receipt, they would um, schedule a mediation. Um, then they would sit down with a face-to-face -face mediation with the housing provider and the tenant in which case the tenant might share, you know, you might share the implications that that, would, that rent increase would have on your family um, and why it would be difficult for you to <laughs> accommodate that rent increase. The housing provider might share that their costs had gone up and why it was important that they be able to raise the rent by that or that they had additional rehab that they needed to do to the building. Um, so it would be a place where, you know, and the, the mediator would be able to facilitate that conversation. Um, and then there would be a number of different resolutions that could come out of that. One is that, you know, your landlord might say, I understand that you've been out of work for a few months, you're in the construction industry, but you know you're going back to work, why don't we defer this rent, rent increase for a few months? Or they might say, you're right, I only am going to raise it by 5%. Um, or it could be that there is, they're not able to come to any resolution, in which case the 
um, mediator would document that there was no resolution reached and at that point um, the, the uh, rent increase would go into effect as required uh, as requested by the by the housing provider and that would be non-binding um, it so the and so once you enter entering into it is non you know you're required to enter into the mediation but if you sign an agreement so say you you and your housing provider signed an agreement that said that the rent increase would go into effect in three months that agreement would be binding just like your lease agreement is binding okay. um, but the but the requirement that you come to some resolution itself is not binding okay and then just one question on just cause eviction uh, that ordinance um, and I think you may have answered it on your one of your slide four but I wanted to repeat it how is that enforced or regulated or how would that be so there's a number of different ways, and we don't have a just cause in front of us. So we don't, you know, it could be structured in a number of different ways. But typically, um, a just cause is, it, it can be enforced through the courts, similar to our source of income, where um, the most likely scenario, if somebody had a complaint, would be that they would go through the court system. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question uh, on the uh, potential provisions uh, for creation of a rental data unit registration. So is that list public? Yes, that information would be public. Let me make sure that that's correct. Yeah. So any, any member of the public could come in and look at this list yeah. of your address <laughs> and your <laughs> or Teresha. <laughs> There's <laughs> So, Trisha Bell, uh, Deputy County Counsel. So, uh, generally, yes, information like this would be public. There are some provisions in the Public Records Act, kind of a catch-all provision uh, indicating a balancing act for certain information. So, at this point, we'd have to evaluate what type of information would be included in that, and then um, see if that if, if that would be subject to public records. I'm not sure if that would be a list that would be publicly posted, but that's something we can evaluate further and uh, discuss at the merit hearing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, Supervisor yes, so Sears. I, so, Lily, I had a follow-up question uh, from Supervisor Adoni's question about data. There's Table 1 that has some information in it. What's the source of that data about the number of existing uh, owner-occupied housing units and renter-occupied? It's census data, so from, uh, from 2010. From so, 2010. oh, 2015. Oh, American survey. So Department from 2015. Sorry, but it's a little. It okay. it doesn't get down to the level of detail of um, rent level. You know what somebody's actual rent is, but we right. have but this data. Was this survey performed by who? I'm sorry. It's a uh, census data, American Community Survey. So it's a it's actually data taken from the years 2011 to 2015. So it's a five year estimate. Okay, great, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, no more questions. All right, so now I'm going to go to the public, and um, can you raise your hands? How many people want to speak? Okay, so we're going to have two minutes, and if you want to line up, that would be good. To, it'll be less time. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hi. My name is Linda Rames, um, and I am a landlord. And 25 years ago, my husband and I took a road trip to Southern California. On the way, we passed Malibu, a place I really wanted to live. It didn't happen. I still live in Mill Valley because we couldn't afford Malibu. This is also the case with some people who want to live in Marin County. For one reason or another, they can't afford Marin. That's a fact that will not change. You have in front of you the first reading of a rental housing ordinance, which clearly asks you to recommend rent control in Marin County. However, before you get to that part, there are all sorts of red herrings to consider, such as just cause evictions. We don't know what just cause is. Mandatory housing inspections. What does that mean? Relocation assistance for wrongly evicted tenants, what's wrongly evicted? To, all of these to distract you from the main issue. However, in the conclusion of the report, the committee clearly recommends mandatory mediation for all rental cre increases above 5%. This is rent control. And despite all the examples and arguments presented by the committee in favor of restricting rents, 
it is not a good fit for Marin County for several reasons. One, rent control could probably not be instituted without a vote by the residents of Marin County. All the examples used by the committee are of ordinances voted for and enacted by cities, not counties. The population of Marin County is made up primarily of property owners who would not take the usurpation of their property rights lightly. Adding to the level, the level of bureaucracy necessary to police rent control would be a huge burden and expense. Once again, I refer you to the San Francisco Rent Board if you want to see what you would be facing. Thank you. Can I finish this? Just one sentence. Okay. The town of Pacifica, California last month voted down rent control by a 62.3% margin. While the town is smaller than Marin County, the demographics are similar. More owners than renters, environmentally concerned residents, and no Thank desire you. to upset the status quo. Thank Uh, good afternoon. I'm David Schoenbrunn, and I'm a tenant. I'm quite dissatisfied with the board subcommittee's recommendations. To me, mandatory mediation is an oxymoron, like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> I see this proposal as an all-too-safe effort that is inadequate to the scale of the housing crisis. Corporate landlords have no ability to exercise discretion in this negotiating process. And those are the people who are the rapacious ones. So this, this proposal does nothing for that. I'd like to see the county join with other jurisdictions to seek the repeal of Con Costa Hawkins. Few Marin residents have any idea what the county actually does. If you were to adopt just cause, that would make people aware that the county is, is on the case and concerned about the outcomes of all people. On the other hand, a decision to defer action a year will send an unmistakable signal to tenants that the board has pledged allegiance to the landlord class. There will be consequences in future elections. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Philip Cotton. Um, instead of addressing, of course, we do, I don't want this thing. I'm a property owner. It would just be trouble. I'm concerned about this 5% uh, reduction in services. It doesn't address flood, fly, or earthquakes or nonconforming, legal nonconforming. If you have some destruction of the building, hey, the county won't let us put this part back in. There's a reduction in services bang, we're in all these laws, and all of a sudden I've woke up in violation, uh, and if I want to offer my tenants money to move, then I get in more trouble. And if they do move after I've taken away their 5%, now I get to pay them $20,000 if they're paying four grand a month in rent for re relocation expense. I don't like waking up in violation, and I don't, uh, don't want to sign up for any more fees, registrations, or administrative things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Virginia Sargent. I'd like to introduce myself not only to the board, but to all the renters here. My parents have been providing middle-class housing in Marin County for over 50 years. My dad drove a bakery truck for 30 years. And when you refer to the landlord or class, my dad was working class. We didn't we didn't have a lot of luxuries in our house, but my parents invested in real estate. My dad was the maintenance man, the painter, the plumber. He didn't do electricity because he probably would have burnt the building down and not been in, in, been in violation. The point is we have had a really good relationship with, of all, with all of our tenants because it's a collaborative effort, because it's not mandated. And my parents, my mom handles the finances, they don't like to do rent increases. It's simple math. If their expenses go up, they have to increase rents. What are their expenses? With all due respect to the board, property taxes, Marin Municipal Water District rates, garbage rates, 
Is there any discussion of that? We also have a huge, um, uh, we all vote on parcel taxes, and those are uh, thinly disguised ways of getting um, uh, funding for our unfunded pensions. So there's, a, I, I don't want to go into a whole lot of other things, but we, we need to look at the expenses. So um, I only have 14 seconds left, but I do want to have me as a face of the landlord class. And I'd like to encourage small investors like my parents rather than corporate investors. I'll say one more thing about corporate investors. They came in in Tiburon and purchased and displaced a lot of renters. We were horrified along with you. Thank you. So let's Thank have you. small investors who are Time part of the community up. and lived here many Come years. Up here now, please. Hi, my name is Meg Brizolera. I've been a renter in Marin County for 42 years. I'm not currently a renter, but my entire adult life I've been a renter here. Um, right now, tenants have no protections that are not spelled out in the state law, meaning that they can't be evicted for um, being a member of a protected class. Other than that, there is, there is no restriction on how you go about getting rid of a tenant. And it's close to my heart because I was asked to vacate um, a, a rental property I lived in years ago. They gave me no reason. Um, I, had a, I had a feeling what the reason was, and I went to an attorney. I went to two different attorneys. They said, well, you can't prove it, so there's no point in fighting it. People don't fight these things. You can be evicted for any reason. You can be asked to vacate for any reason. A reason does not have to be given you. That's different from other counties around us. If there's no problem, then why do other counties adopt these just cause ordinances? And I don't understand for the life of me why somebody would object to being prohibited from evicting somebody for a good reason. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, one of these people that's being demonized in my opinion. I'm a, I own a small apartment complex in Strawberry that I inherited, that I had to buy out other family members. I seldom raise my rent, and if I do, it's very seldom more than 3 to 4 percent. I take care of my building. My tenants call me. I instantly have a repair person there. I manage it myself. I'm a disabled senior. I'm taking care of an aged mother. I'm not a charity. I am running a business. My tenants love me. They've been there more than 15 years in many cases. I feel that the small apartment owner is not being considered a contributing member to our community, and I think that needs to be looked at. We're paying high taxes, and yes, as the last speaker before me said, we're getting hit with parcel taxes. Just today, I got a bill for $998 in addition to my regular property tax for schools. Sewer in, in Strawberry went up 18%. Water's up a tremendous amount. How can we cover our expenses when we can only increase our rent by 5% or less? Um, it's very difficult to do business this way. And if these ordinances go through, I will probably sell my building. And I'd want you to realize that the rents will go sky high. My one bedrooms are renting from... 1650 to less than 1900. Two bedrooms, one two bedroom is at 2475. I'm not getting rich. It's a very small complex. I think you need to look at our interest as well. My tenants do like me. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Carla Valdez. Uh, I have been a renter in Marin County for 11 years. I'm a parent. I work a part-time job, and I am active volunteer uh, and leader at my daughter's school, Parent Services Project, and the Marine Organizing Committee. As renters, we understand that rent will go up. We understand that landlords m need to make a profit. However, for families who make two or three thousand dollars a month, a rent increase of two hundred or three hundred dollars can mean you can not you can afford to live in your home anymore. 
In MOC, we have work in our neighborhoods, talk to our friends and family and neighbors. This is a problem across all parts of Marie. The cost of living causes a lot of stress and hardship for a lot of people. I'm one of those people. I, I stand with MOC to support a manda mandatory mediation ordinance, but we also need a just cause eviction ordinance. Landlords, landlords evict people for no reason at all, and this is also part of the problem. I urge the supervisor to support both mandatory mediation and just cause for evi eviction. Thank you. Yes, hi, thank you. Lily reminded me, we do have translation services here, so if someone needs one, please let Lily know. Okay. Good afternoon, supervisors and members of the public. I'm Reverend Tom Gable, pastor of Marin Lutheran Church in Corte Madera. And this afternoon, I'm representing the Marin Organizing Committee. We have come before this board and met with all of you individually over this past year. To summarize facts we all know, renters make up over one-third of Marin residents. Yet as rents have soared, there are virtually no protections for them before the law. Renters are at the mercy of the marketplace and the goodwill of landlords. For those who have good landlords, that's fine, but many are big companies with little concern for the hardship that renters face. Renters are disproportionately people of color and low-income people in Marin. From our perspective, housing is not merely another commodity. Stable, affordable housing is the bedrock of life and well-being. The cities and towns of Marin County are looking to the Board of Supervisors for leadership on this issue of renter protections. MOC, representing thousands of families across Marin, supports the proposed Rental Housing Dispute Resolution Ordinance. In fact, the tenant-landlord meeting attended by over 300 people in August and referenced in the staff report was organized by MOC. We support education around mediation services, but not just limited to a hotline or website. We want community-focused bilingual education, and we are willing to work with you in order to create an effective community-based program. In addition, MOC strongly supports the passage of a Residential Landlord and Tenant Relations Ordinance, or Just Cause Eviction, that would include requirements for relocation costs, data collection, and for landlords to provide written reasons for eviction. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hello. This is my experience of becoming homeless. July of 2016, I found and moved into a small cottage in Forest Knolls. The landlady made it clear that she just wanted someone who would pay the rent and be trouble-free. She was not soft and cuddly. Right away, there was trouble. No water in the toilet. That went on for a month as I had to fill it with, with each use. They finally fixed it. Negligence continued in many ways. On December 16th, after many days of rain, a flash flood occurred in Forest Knolls. <coughs> I ran out and saved my car, came back and saved the cats. The cameras came, and I was on the 6 o'clock news. The following day, the landlady came, inspected, told me to get out. Get out, she said. I'll return the rest of the month's rent. Get your things out so I can have the insurance people come. Get everything out. She did not lift a finger or offer any kind of help at all, just her screaming in my ear to take everything out to storage to the dump. Just do it now. She stood there as I removed my ruined furniture and took it to the dump. It cost many thousands of dollars. She had me sign something. I was in shock. I said, does this mean I can't come back? No, she said. It will be ready to move in ba back in January. I found temporary lodgings. The community helped me, and people let me stay at their homes for one week, two weeks, a house sit here and there. I moved eight times, dragging things with me, not thinking clearly. My cats went to a shelter. I could not sleep. My memory started failing big time. Finally, sometime in February, middle of February, she said, it's ready, you can move in. 
I was already situated for the month of February. No, you have to move in now. I need the money. We compromised. I came back at the end of February. When I opened the door, the smell of sewage was overwhelming. There was the smell of gas. There were cracks in the walls. The toilet was no longer oh, attached to the floor. <laughs> It's my first time doing this. All right. Um, there was bacteria. Anyway, I treated it. After two months, she told me I could not renew the lease. They were ending the lease at, in two months' time. How did you become homeless? When I had to leave that house. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yes. My name is George Wilson. I'm a Presbyterian minister, but I work with the Village Church in uh, Mill Valley, a church that founded uh, the Redwoods, which now has 350 people in it, a church that is mindful and, and, and very curious about what's going on here. I lay upon this group of legislators, you are our answer to this enormous question. What is the moral responsibility that lies upon your shoulders to defend the poor, to take the sick, to understand who they are? This is what America needs. We, are, we have lushed money. This is the richest county in America. Do you know that? You know that. That money put you in office. That money runs the schools, the best schools in the, in the state are right here. Now, how shall we take on this? We have some of the best minds in this county, men and women that have gotten their purses together and have contributed one and a half million dollars to some school systems so that they would have music and poetry and sculpturing and all those kind of arts that make for the good life. What will make for the good life of more of our citizens that come to us in color, in new colors, with new ways, with new hopes, with new loves for the world. Amen. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jack Gundersheim. I'm the owner of a tenant screening firm called Tenant Verification Service. I've owned that firm for it, over 15 years. I have uh, probably a thousand clients in uh, over the years and the vast majority of them which I think is representative of Marin are mom and top pop owners. They are not the big companies. We have very few of those in Marin County. I am in favor of mediation as a concept. I was in favor of the mediation group that you had separate from the district attorney's office years ago. Now you have it in a district attorney's office and I think that it, it works fine except a lot of people don't know about it or are afraid to go in front of a district attorney uh, office. Uh, I think that their charge is a little different than what you're presented with here because there you're dealing with both tenants and landlords that don't understand the law very well or violated the law and the examples of this young uh, lady that preceded me here obviously had two different landlords that were violating the law. That's really not a reason why you should do this mediation. Uh, the reason I think that you should not do this mediation is because it doesn't work. Uh, and the reason I say that is that if you look at Palo Alto, Berkeley, San Francisco, and many other, uh, San Mateo I believe, uh, you'll find that their rents, if anything, exceed the rents here in Marin County. And the reason that happens is because rent control doesn't work. Uh, it's an attempt to have it work, but it doesn't work in the long run. It helps some people for a period of time. When they eventually moved out, then it goes back up higher than it was before, and in the long run, you end up with, with uh, no effect. And uh, I believe that in this case, you should consider it either not at all, or if you do, just apply it to units that are 50 units or higher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Maya Gladstern. I'm on the board of the San Geronimo Valley Affordable Housing Association. 
We have 26 units of affordable housing, and we're recently able to provide housing for Carol, who spoke to you before. Um, and we have those units thanks to you and the Marin Community Foundation, so we appreciate the support you've done for trying to promote affordable housing. Um, you, the last few years, you've um, progressively made steps to help individuals who are low income and to try to provide more housing for them. Please be bold and continue to do that. We really need to have mandatory mediation, as has been explained by Carol. Um, and then we also, uh, just cause evictions, I'm not sure why you need to wait a year. I think you should be able to adopt that now. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Casey Epp, and I'm the supervising attorney at Fair Housing Advocates of Northern California. Um, and I just want to say I'm here today not only on behalf of my agency, but of all of the tenants who could not take off even one day of work to get here at 1.30 on a Tuesday. Um, this does not speak to the importance for them or how much this affects their life, but how much they are struggling just to be able to continue to live in this county. Um, and I do want to thank the board for considering mandatory mediation, um, but I urge you to reconsider the subcommittee's recommendation to defer uh, just cause eviction for one year. Um, you know, we need just cause eviction to stabilize our communities and mediation is not going to keep people housed. And, um, you know, I understand there's a lot of landlords who are um, here today, the majority of which I will assume are not in favor of adding additional protections, which will require them to give up some level of control, which we're not used to here in Marin. Um, but I think that we're, we're all well aware of the horrible equity ratings that Marin has received. And we all know that those who are most displaced and are most disproportionately affected by the lack of protections are members of protected classes. It's people with disabilities, people of color, families with children. And as we're obligated to do by the Federal Fair Housing Act, and us at Marin as a jurisdiction, we're supposed to take proactive measures to address the segregated living patterns and affirmatively further fair housing, and just cause eviction and mandatory mediation simultaneously is the only way to, or from what's on the table right now, to try to address that. As it stands right now, and I've already seen this in Sonoma, with how landlords are responding to, um, you know, the governor's um, freeze on, or at least, you know, the, the um, rent increase no more than 10%. Well, then instead of doing that, they're just terminating tenancies. And without just cause eviction, that's what people are going to do to avoid the mandatory mediation process if they want to give an increase higher than 5%. Well, they can just terminate someone's tenancy. And I do want to say that, you know, it came up earlier, well, if you can't afford Marin, I promise I really will be one sentence. Um, I think we all need to think about how do you accumulate wealth and what role the federal government played in that. And I suggest you look at Richard Rothstein's color of law to see how we're all responsible. And thank you. My name is Jack Bartlett. I'm here representing 100 people in Seniors for Peace, a group of the Redwoods. My last, I retired 20 years ago, but before that I spent 22 years managing and administering federally funded social programs that serve the disadvantaged in different ways. So I have some experience with that. Um, before I came here today, I picked up a, a publication entitled um, Data from County, this is County Development Agency 2015, and it noted of the 2,600 residents in the county, 36%, that's 95,000, are renters. 25,000 of those renters live in unincorporated areas. In other words, areas under your discretion, this discretion here. In 2015, 32% of the renters were paying 50% of their income for rent. That's disproportionately high. The report also had a section called Key Problems. Three, these three problems were, were first place. Number one was arbitrary eviction. So there certainly is a need for the programs, your mandatory mediation and just cause. The second was large rent increases, and the third was poor conditions in apartments. There's really no, no reason why a county that's this um, well off cannot help the most needy. It, what's been said, we can judge the society 
by the way it treats its most needy. Um, I would hope that you would proceed with the program, and, and there's no reason why you can't do it fairly. Citing other counties is a poor way out. Um, I'll stop there, but I hope you follow through with what you are intending to do. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ken Homer. I've been a resident of Marin County and a renter since uh, December of 1990. And five years ago, after living 17 years in an apartment, um, I was given a 60-day notice of eviction by a process server, even though I had never been late on rent and I'd taken good care of the property. Didn't even have the decency to call me up and say, hey, I know it's a tight market. We're gonna be doing some remodeling. I want you to give some, give some notice. Uh, I managed to find another place nearby um, the apartment I used to live in, they raised the rent by $900 after putting in a dishwasher and a couple new light fixtures. Um, since I moved into my new place five years ago, my rent has gone up by $500 a month. I was at an event yesterday sponsored by the Marin Economic Forum talking about the housing crisis on steroids. Gentleman there from the Marin Economic Forum said he recently completed a building project that cost him $275 a square foot. And he believes with the new building going up in uh, Sonoma County, that's probably gonna go up to about $500 a square foot for housing. We're in a perfect storm where there's a lot of financial pressure for people to come in and say, we're just gonna take and charge whatever the market will bear and if you can't afford it, too bad, move. I don't wanna leave my county. I've been here a long time. I'm an integral part of a number of different communities. I can't afford a $400 or $600 or $1,000 a month rent increase and it's quite likely that the person who owns my property, who I will not refer to as a landlord because there's nothing lordly about him, uh, is probably gonna come in and put a squeeze on us this year. He jacked up by $200 last year. He's having some construction done that I'm sure he wants to fund out of his own pocket. So I just ask you to consider that there's a lot of us who are, you know, we look like we're doing all right, but a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, starts to really take a toll on us. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bobby Elam and I'm president of the Marin Rental Property Association. I'd like to begin my remarks by thanking the board your deliberation and thoughtfulness and listening to all the comments I know that housing and a subset of affordable housing and anything related to housing is a very complicated uh, thankless job um, and it's it has a lot fraught with a lot of problems I also know that it hits a nerve with us personally as well um, I've only been an owner for 10 years I was actually a resident for 14 so I, I can see how this really touches us and and can ratchet up the pressure and the and the um, and the argument as president of the Marin Rental Property Association I just want to make a few comments we have a hundred to 150 to 200 members it fluctuates on a yearly basis we have an additional hundred 150 attendees raising it to about an average of 300 we have 3400 units mostly in Marin County and everyone that I've spoken to in my organization universally opposes this proposal as written now before we say, well, aren't you gonna oppose everything? That's not our track record. We didn't oppose Section 8 ordinance. Uh, we did not uh, halt with the Landlord-Tenant Partnership. We pushed forward with it, uh, with uh, working alongside the Marin Housing Authority. I also recommend that the three options be tabled. I've never heard them before in any open discussion that I've attended. Uh, they should be tabled for feedback and comment from the public. I recommend that we consider the carrot rather than the stick going into 2018. It seems like a lot of these proposals don't have any collaboration or, well, why don't we look at both sides of the equation? Uh, we also recommend that we consider production and ultimately if we wanna have affordable housing, we need to make housing affordable and we need to start looking into infill somewhere in our county. And finally, I need to leave because we have a holiday party this evening from 5.30 to seven, all landlords and tenants are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. My name is Joe B. Toppy. I'm an uh, apartment broker here in Marin, and I have 20 years' experience managing rental property in San Francisco, so I have seen the effects of rent control and just cause evictions. Um, rent control actually leads to more gentrification than less. When units stop coming on the market because people burrow in and stay with the um, artificial price ceilings, you have fewer and fewer units being exposed to markets. So when they are, they will be asking the absolute top of the market, thereby pricing out anybody who would normally want to move or maybe move to a larger property. 
uh, the just cause, it really prevents ending the tenancy. We've recently had a, it, evictions are already hard and expensive enough. I'm affiliated with a property here in Marin, uh, 24 units. A tenant removed a load-bearing wall. We gave him a 60-day notice to quit, and it took a year with no rent payment and over $100,000 of legal cost to get this person who damaged the property out. Just cause evictions will not stop that type of um, action from being expensive and difficult. And when you have tenants who don't violate a specific just cause, you may have them affecting every other tenant on the property. So it's something that I would strongly urge you to reconsider and take your time before going forward with. Um, more people are here in Marin. That's why rents are increasing, because people want to be here. But I haven't seen any type of real housing plan to add, because the answer to increasing rents and increasing population is not to put arbitrary price controls, it's to add more bedrooms. So what we need is a comprehensive housing plan where you can get infill in infrastructure appropriate areas, maintaining our open space and maintaining the affordability through some sort of subsidization or pri uh, um, means testing for affordable units. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wendy Callens, and I'm representing the Coalition for a Livable Marin. I apologize, our um, litter went in late, so we have copies for you. We support the staff recommendation for a rental housing dispute uh, program, mandatory mediation, and in particular, we recommend including all potential additional provisions listed in the addendum, which will make the program more effective. And I'd like to e emphasize this is, this is mediation, this is not rent control, with all due respect to the previous speakers. However, we feel this step does not have a significant impact and needs to be supplemented by several additional programs. As your board has recognized from time to time, our, house, our county is in a housing crisis. Uh, as been recognized by Governor Brown, who recently extended a proclamation preventing rent gouging in three of our counties, most affected by the recent fires, which displaced over 5,000 people, not only are we in a housing crisis, but it has just been exasperated. These uh, impacts of these fires extend far beyond the borders of those three counties. We call upon your board to recognize this housing emergency and take bold steps to address it. Number one, it is time for just cause eviction. It's time to act to turn the corner to meet the challenges of the day. We should not defer consideration of this measure. We also request the government that you request Governor Brown to include Marin in the state of emergency related to the fires, which would include a prohibition against rent gouging or s adopt a similar policy within the county. Implement an emergency temporary rent freeze for a period of six months, renewable if the crisis persists. Provide emergency funding to the agencies such as legal aid who can help residents protect their rights and direct staff to review all land holdings by the county and to agencies for candidates for development of permanent affordable housing or creation of a land trust. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. My name is Kim Thompson. I serve as the director of the Community Land Trust Association of West Marin where we have a membership of over 100 people, seven properties, and 16 rental households and two home ownership households. Um, first, we want to say that rent stabilization does work. Ask any one of the 16 renting households uh, who have a stable rent in West Marin um, at CLAM. Uh, stable rents um, enable people to be more involved in their community, show up to work on time without commutes, and enable vital social services to continue uninterrupted. Rent stabilization works. And in terms of the items on the table today, um, we hope to see rent stabilization on the table in the future. We do want to affirm the mandatory mediation policy and really commend the staff and the housing subcommittee that's very thoughtfully constructed. 
Um, and it demonstrates how the just cause uh, eviction and a mandatory mediation continue to support one another to create the right kind of safety net for renting populations. So we would like to see those work together. Um, in addition, we would, sorry, pardon me. We would like to see the county market the mandatory mediation measure once it's finalized uh, to ensure that those who are least likely to know about it or least likely to apply in terms of the fair housing standards really are well informed that this exists. Um, we also would like to ask, please, do, please um, don't defer just cause at this meeting. Have it at the next meeting where more renters can be present at an evening public hearing. Um, and thirdly, we would like to see uh, Just Cause be supported. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bob Pendoli. I'm speaking for the Marin Environmental Housing Collaborative. First, um, thank you for considering and hopefully adopting the um, mandatory mediation ordinance. Uh, one concern we have with it is that there is no mandate to actually come to a resolution. And since that could come out, get out of hand, uh, we would urge you to monitor it and look at it six months and a year later to see what kind of results you're getting. Uh, next, we'd like to strongly urge you to adju uh, adopt the Just Cause Eviction Ordinance now. Um, we have three concerns. First is equity. In the rental transition, the transaction, the landlord has all the high cards. Um, there, is, there is no financial incentive to play fair when there's a zero vacancy rate. And, and I will give you that we think, we do believe most landlords do play, pay fair, play fair, but you've certainly heard plenty of testimony of, um, that suggests abuse. Second concern is displacement. If you're evicted in Marin County, you should forgive my language, you're screwed. Um, the, odds, the odds are quite high that you're gonna become homeless, and we know that's happening. And that's because there's a zero vacancy rate. There's no place to go. Um, finally, um, we're concerned about habitability. Um, if, you're a, if you're a tenant um, and you've got repairs that need to be made, there's mold, the, the stove doesn't work anymore, you're gonna hesitate before you ask the landlord to um, correct it because you've heard testimony from tenants who wound up being evicted after they requested repairs. So for that reason, we would uh, ad urge you to adopt the Just Cause Ordinance as soon as possible. Um, we can see no advantage to delaying it for a year. Um, you've been holding these meetings since October of 2015, um, and you've heard testimony over and over again about um, abusive evictions. Um, we think you should act now. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Laurie Joyce. I'm a staff attorney at Legal Aid of Marin, and I want to thank the board for um, considering both of these ordinances. Legal Aid of Marin is in um, wholeheartedly supports both of these ordinances, mandatory mediation and just cause for eviction. Um, and Legal Aid wants to um, make clear to the board that we see dozens, at least two dozen tenants a month in our office dealing with issues of habitability, of terminations that um, appear to be discriminatory and tenants primarily that we see are living in fear and are and feel intimidated to raise these issues. Um, Legal Aid of Marin does do a lot of outreach in the community and we want to um, cooperate and offer our services to the board to continue to do that outreach in the community and education and also to do data collection because Legal Aid is in the unique position of being able to see so many tenants per month and at all stages, from their concerns to post uh, being served with termination notices and, uh, in some cases, unlawful detainer complaints. And also Legal Aid assists with, you know, many tenants with enforcement of their rights um, if we do end up in court. And we want to make sure that the board um, is aware that Legal Aid of Marin is willing to cooperate, offer its services on any of those levels and we look forward to continuing working with the board to provide stable housing for our, in particular for our seniors and disabled who live with a lot of anxiety and I, I think this is something that's hard to measure that how many families and households and seniors live with chronic anxiety because of their fear of losing their housing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barry Joseph. <coughs> property manager of uh, 
202 unit complex in Mill, <coughs> in Mill Valley. Uh, I was going to talk about the mandatory mediation, which we're opposed to. It's not going to work. Uh, but I've heard, heard things about um, landlords basing rents and maintenance. Uh, our rents, our trustee raises rents uh, no more than once a year and generally under 5%. Um, very fair. Uh, as far as maintenance is concerned, uh, we're an older complex uh, <clears throat> and you have problems. We are fast to fix any problems, tenant complaints, uh, tenant will call, call us uh, with a mold problem, we fix it right away. We spend what it takes to keep our property up. And I mean, that, that's, um, we change light bulbs, we do, we, do, we do everything for our tenants and we do it fast. So I mean, you know, I, I've, I've heard some of this about landlords uh, who stick it to the tenants. We don't. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Good afternoon, Board of Supervisors. My name is Chris Harrington. I'm a long-term resident of Stinson Beach, a retired real estate broker, and also the founder of the Stinson Beach Affordable Housing Committee. We did a project with you and set several other entities in Stinson Beach last year. Uh, the acute shortage of housing stock skews the residential real, uh, residential real estate market strongly in favor of landlords. Uh, if there are a number of available properties, then a negotiation can, can occur and an, an arrangement made. Uh, in a market such as ours, uh, that's not possible, and the loss of housing can be devastating for tenants, rendering them, uh, render, endangering their, their home, their security, their jobs, uh, the education of their children. Uh, it's not my intention here to vilify landlords. They're the providers of real estate uh, most endeavor to treat their tenants fairly, and some have uh, long long-term relationships with their tenants with flat rental rates. So this is not an effort to impugn their integrity. But by the same token, there are also obligations on the part of larger uh, property managers uh, to maximize income, which can, can have an effect of essentially disenfranchising or, or rendering homeless uh, tenant populations. So the current level of housing need, the acute lack of inventory, uh, and the inequality uh, and inequity of respective bargaining positions of landlords and tenants, uh, it seems to occasion the necessity for government to intervene and provide some structures so that, so that conversations between landlords and tenants can be orchestrated more carefully and dealt with more equitably as a consequence of that on behalf of the Stinson Beach Affordable Housing Committee. Uh, I advocate that. The, uh, the mediation ordinance uh, be approved and move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Raleigh Katzmer Association of Public Employees. We represent about 1,300 county employees, uh, many of whom, maybe most of whom, cannot afford to live in Marin County. Uh, we have been advocates for doing things to try to make housing more affordable, so we join with others today in advocating not just for the uh, mediation but also for eviction and, and stabilization. Let me make a few comments. Uh, there are comments earlier about demonizing people and I think too often in our public discourse today we do too much of that um, and maybe I do some of it myself. Uh, and I don't mean to be clichéish but there are good landlords, there are bad landlords, there are good tenants, there are bad tenants. Uh, and there are stories to be told uh, on both sides that can be disturbing and horrifying. But I also heard talks about increases in property tax, et cetera, under Prop 13. Property taxes go up 2% a year. Uh, assess uh, parcel taxes are approved by the voters, not simply to pay for unfunded pension liability. But I was always taught the market sets the price. And as other speakers have pointed out, the market today simply favors the seller, the owner of the property, and disfavors the tenant. That's the reality we're dealing with. And I don't think public policy's primary objective is to maximize return on investment for those who are fortunate enough to invest. The problem is there's not enough housing, but that's not going to change in the next six months or a year. In fact, you this morning, I think, voted to oppose state policy that would tie transportation funding to housing. 
greenest county in Marin in the state. Um, so until something's done about supply, even if it's not a perfect solution, and there is no perfect solution, everything is always both under-inclusive and over-inclusive, there needs to be something done. A member of ours came in today. His rent just went up a thousand bucks. Now the nice end of the story is he was able to buy a condominium half as big as the apartment, the house or the apartment he had where he rented. A thousand bucks, 60 percent. In fairness, previous landlord hadn't raised his rent, but that was a 60 percent increase. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, <clears throat> I'm Margaret Honey. I am what you call a small mom and pop uh, landlord. Um, I am very much in favor of affordable housing everywhere, not just in Marin County. However, I strongly uh, disagree with the proposals of these ordinances. Uh, the cost of rents are determined by supply and demand, just like this gentleman alluded to. More affordable housing has to be built, and then the rents will eventually stabilize. We just don't have enough housing. Uh, San Francisco has rent control, which also has just caused eviction. And guess what? San Francisco is one of the most expensive rental markets in the country. There are a few people who have been in, living in their apartments for since the 90s, 80s. They're paying $300 rent for something that's worth 3000 Okay. Um, and the co what you're proposing, the 5%, that does not reflect the cost of living, what all our expenses. As far as just cause evictions, why would a landlord want to evict a good tenant? When a tenant leaves, there are incurred expenses, pa repainting, refurbishing, everything, advertising, time loss. So the landlords want only evict the bad tenants. Uh, this is a restriction on the landlord, this proposal. And to this proposal, this ordinance would uh, include, will cost a lot of uh, money to implement this ordinance. Um, so that's why creating new housing is the best deal, the only solution. Thank you. Can I say one more thing? No. The five percent increase is does not cover the Thank rental, you. the price of fixing stuff. My plumbers and everything they go, they charge a lot more than five percent every year. Thank you. <clears throat> Should I start? Yes. My name is Hans Art. Um, I'm a mom and pop uh, landlord uh, in San Rafael. I have uh, uh, owned a property there for ten years, and I live in San Francisco. And I've seen rent control, and I just want to sort of recap things that have been said. Uh, rent control, which is what we're talking about in little tiny steps here, because you're going to come back next year and do something else, and you're going to come back next year and do something else, and it's going to get tighter. And after a while, it will be indistinguishable from the uh, situation we have in San Francisco, which has done nothing but drive rents up for all the reasons that people have said. Um, <clears throat> Remember that what you're doing is you're creating a social welfare program, but you're making a small portion of the population shoulder the cost. So if you want to do it righteously, add a parcel tax to everybody's property in Marin, in Marin County and say this is going to go to subsidize people that can't afford to live here that we want to keep here. That's the right way to do it. The other thing you need to do is build more housing, which we all assume is not going to happen. Um, so I won't even get into that. Um, the other thing that rent control does is it will drive us out of the business. Uh, property next door to me just sold for a magnificent price to a consortium of, of investors. And those are the people who are just looking at the bottom line. So, you know, if, when we get tempted to sell, you're going to encourage a movement towards that sort of ownership. If you insist on passing rent control, include means testing. In San Francisco, I know people that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and pay $1,200 a month rent. No kidding. The other thing is, I'm finishing up, in San Francisco there are estimated to be 10 to 20,000 units that people hold off the market empty because they don't even want to deal with it. Thank you very much. I don't envy your job. 
My name is Melissa Prandy, and I own Prandy Property Management. And property management rentals is my life. I have been managing for 35 years. It's a long time. And I pride myself in working in this community. I was asked by Damon to serve on a committee with many people in this room. And we came together at the table as one. Everybody listening and respectfully listening to everybody represented at that table. I was born and raised in this community. I've been a renter. I own my own home. I'm a landlord that doesn't raise rents. But I also represent 700 properties and some over 500 landlords that don't raise rents over 10%. We have to work together. We need affordable housing. We know that. But we've got to figure out a way to, to balance it. Our vendors, we have licensed and insured plumbers and tradespeople. Their prices have gone way up. Our ma and pa small landlords cannot afford just to keep the rents stable. We, at the committee, we didn't really get a lot of chance to look over this proposal. There was never a discussion of 5%, really, and determined at the end of our committee when we reviewed everything. Uh, there was a talk about 10% and a forced mediation. I don't recall ever seeing this before, this all coming in front of the supervisors today. I believe we have to work together. I work with a lot of the Section 8 housing. I take care of our properties. We walk through our properties on an annual basis. We call it inside property evaluation to care for our properties. It's not easy to counsel landlords, but I'm willing to step up and I'm willing to help, and I hope that we can come to a good resolution. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the Board of Supervisors. My name is Len Rifkine. I've been practicing law for 29 years, and I actually specialize in landlord-tenant law. And you just happen to see one of my clients that just spoke just before you. And on the few evictions that Perandi Property Management has, we always work with the tenants to try to resolve it. And they are only righteous evictions because people are not paying rent is the typical problem. What is the real problem that's before this board? The real problem is that there's a lack of affordable housing and uh, that's it. And will this proposed ordinance solve that problem? Obviously not. Adding a layer of bureaucracy is not going to get more housing units in this county, which is something we all desperately need. So what is the problem with the ordinance? The problem with the ordinance is, is that there's no data, either in the staff report or anything, that shows there is a pervasive problem in this county that there's rent spikes, or bad faith evictions or anything like that, and state law amply deals with that issue. I'm going to try in one minute to review this very long document, and I obviously won't accomplish that, so I'm just going to start, but I have many comments. I think there are lots of problems with the ordinance, and it's not prime time, and I'm happy to submit my comments this week because I know we have a second reading. Um, uh, finding number seven says it acknowledges there's a shortage of rental housing. So if you have a problem, let's get a solution that actually solves the problem. This ordinance isn't it. Finding 11 says that the Board of Supervisors finds and determines that regulating the relations between certain residential landlords, I'm not sure who those certain landlords are, but they must be bad. They're just not identified anywhere. And all residential tenants will increase certainty and fairness within the residential rental market. I want to see the data that shows there's uncertainty and unfairness in what we're talking about. You've heard from the majority of landlords in this county are mom and pops. And now with five seconds, I have to be quiet, but I have many, many more comments about this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike Paganini, I'm neither a renter uh, nor a landlord, just a concerned person on policy issues. I want to start off by saying uh, I would like, like the first speaker, uh, she mentioned she wanted to live in Malibu. I would prefer to live in Corona del Mar, a beautiful area. But unfortunately, I'm stuck in the city of San Rafael. If anyone here has any suggestions on how I can afford to get to uh, Corona del Mar, I'd really appreciate it, because it's a beautiful town. <laughs> no, I don't drink anymore. That's a past life. In any event, my comments are directed to the stabilization ordinance. Uh, the proposed ordinance, I believe, Yes, the proposed ordinance will cause dist uh, distortions into, in the rental market. As has been previously mentioned, proponents are correct in one issue. Old tenants will have, over a period of time, 
uh, lower uh, rents. They will be below market rate rents. However, new incoming tenants, which may very well be the board's children's children, when they come to uh, Marin County to rent, they will be subsidizing the older tenants. And, and frankly, as a policy person, I don't know what's fair in a rental market, but I don't think it's fair to let new people come into an area and have them subsidizing the older tenants. Uh, one other concern I have is your proposal does not address or even seem concerned with the issue of inflation. Uh, I know there are a lot of young people in the audience. They don't remember 1980 when inflation was 13.5%. Uh, I realize all the financial planning experts in our Federal Reserve Bank say that inflation looks uh, like it's tame, at least in the next few years. It'll go, going to go up a little bit uh, beyond 2.5%, but they don't really see uh, it increasing much beyond 3%. And uh, frankly, they've been wrong many times before. Uh, uh, inflation can raise its ugly head, and that is clearly uh, at the detriment to homeowners, to landlords, and ultimately to renters, because somebody's got to pay the bill. Uh, Thank you. I'll leave with that. Good luck to you, everyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Corey. I'm a pain in the neck. Um, <laughs> I also uh, drove through uh, Southern California not too long ago. When I, well, when I, well, actually, four years ago, um, and I wanted to. I went through uh, Hearst Mansion, Inn, and I wanted to live there very, very badly. <laughs> but, but I realized it's a national park. It's not zoned for housing. We have 84 percent of our land not zoned for housing. Quit with this discriminatory, disparate impact restrictive zoning let's set, let's find some land let's find let's do the jury lot let's do marinwood let's incentivize affordable housing that's for next year right now we are in a crisis the chinese character for crisis is danger and opportunity that's what causes this friction between sides I'm a landlord. I just became a member of your organization. I don't agree at all. I feel that the that landlords have a duty to provide homes. And I think the the ordinance as written is toothless. I, don't, I haven't heard of any movement forward on those people who I've sent several to legally who advertise still that they don't take Section 8. There's a sign on the door of legal aid. We cannot help you unless you're in court. Please give them more resources. We are in a crisis. This is not a 20-year thing. There are four different components which are listed in the letter from, com from COM making this a 500-year flood. Please address it effectively. Include the potential items in the, in, the, uh, in the appendix. Please do just cause eviction, and we need more. We'll address that next time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christopher McManus. I'm a lifelong resident of Marin County. I graduated TAM High in 73. I'm a tenant in Fairfax uh, at the Creekside Apartments. I stand before you as a victim of a no-cause eviction on September 11th of this year. My landlord told me that they were, um, they wanted to come into my apartment uh, to upgrade a bathroom fan. And I said, fine, uh, you just needed to give me a 24-hour notice as the law requires. And they served me with a notice to terminate tenancy. My landlord, my lawyer, uh, is uh, was Lori Choice. I went to Marin Housing. Uh, this was a blatant retaliatory action on their part. I'm a senior disabled resident of this county. Um, the Progressive Property Group uh, uh, filed this. Uh, Notice to terminate tenancy, and Lori Joyce, my attorney at Legal Aid, sent them uh, that I was a senior disabled and that they were in violation of the Fair Housing Act. It was only the other day that they rescinded the eviction. Um, meanwhile, they have um, made um, 
this was a no cause eviction. Uh, it, it, it could have been avoided by a just cause. Um, and the, uh, the Progressive Property Group has uh, claimed many accusations against me at this point, claiming that they want to uh, give me a three-day quit if I uh, don't um, behave. Uh, we still have not gotten any of the uh, documentation from them. Oh, we've asked them for two months to send us documentation of any uh, violations on my part. Anyway, I stand here, I ask you to, to uh, support just cause eviction to avoid this type of uh, abusive process. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry I, oops. Sorry, I don't get to address Supervisor Sears, but maybe you can Do you want to let someone relay. Go ahead? She can hear you. She'll sure. Hear you. Yes. I'll let someone else do it. Okay, come on. We'll let you back in as soon as she comes in. Hello, my name is Suzanne Sadowski. I live in the San Geronimo Valley. I've been a homeowner and I'm currently a renter. I got my social security notice that they're gonna raise my uh, social security by 2%. Uh, fortunately, my landlord has not indicated that he will raise my rent, um, but I live in a great deal of anxiety as a retired person, wondering what is gonna happen should he do that. I represent a lot of other older people living in the San Geronimo Valley and throughout Marin who've lived here and invested their lives and their resources and their talents in building this wonderful, wonderful county that we live in. I urge you to adopt both of these ordinances, their modest, modest proposals without delay. Sure, we need more housing. Everyone knows that. Oh, what is it going to happen, overnight? No, it's going to take years before we're able to infill our existing housing stock and build additional housing in, in areas where we're able to do that. But we need to do something now. We have an erosion. We, we, I mean, the housing crisis is in the news every day. Every paper you pick up will tell you about the crisis that we're in. So it's up to you guys to make, and women, to um, make this change so that we can have some small impact on the fact that our communities are, our housing is, is decimated, our school districts are, have lower enrollment because young people cannot afford to live here. Young families cannot afford to live here. Older people are being displaced. The whole fabric of our community is being eroded. So please do the right thing, protect our, our constituencies, um, people are really counting on you to help. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wendy Botlin and I live in Marin County. Um, and I have to say as a renter, it's not always, it doesn't always feel so safe to get up here and speak about renters issues at all. Um, and before that, I just, as a disabled person, I know this happens where I live in Fairfax too, but it's, it's impossible to stand in line for some of us. Um, and I just wanna say that there's a lack of access as far as that goes in coming up here and speaking. Um, we're in a housing crisis, we're in an emergency, and we all know that and it's getting worse. And yet Marin County and not a single town in Marin County has done anything about it. So I do urge you to do something I don't think this goes far enough, but it's better than nothing. But if you're gonna pass the mediation, I don't agree with passing the mediation without passing just cause also. There's no protection for renters to go into mediation if there's no just cause. There's no protection for any of the state laws that we have, which are hardly any, which is the only rights we have as a renter. There's no protection for them when there is no just cause. Because as soon as you try to, as soon as you try to, um, advocate for any of the laws and the rights that we're supposed to have under California law, you're putting yourself at risk for getting evicted. I don't agree with not passing just cause now. I don't understand why you would wait to pass just cause. It's needed now, not next year. Um, and as far as the registration list goes, I don't know the details of it, but I would advocate for it not not having every single person have to have all their information be public. It's not safe. It's not safe for victims of domestic violence at all to have them listed on a public registry. So I want 
that to be thought of also. Um, and yeah, I, I really um, want to advocate for the just cause part. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Gerber. I'm a commercial real estate broker here in the county, resident of San Rafael. Uh, I own apartment property. I've been before you, I've sent you letters, and I've presented um, data to you. Um, first, I'd like to say that good public policy involves empirical statistical information, and we don't have that. Um, the information that Lily Thomas has presented, um, with all due respect, isn't accurate. The last time I heard her quote a two-bedroom, the average two-bedroom rent in this county, it was off by something like five or six hundred dollars. It was a number that was reported in the IJ, but when I spoke to that reporter and straightened her out and gave her some information, she changed that number. So I don't think we have statistical information to make good public policy decisions. That's number one. Um, but let's talk about options that do work. Mediation does work for tenants and landlords to sit down and safely discuss their issues and have them resolved. The court system, if that doesn't work. Tenants and landlord educational workshops do work, um, and I agree with um, the Reverend. I think we can educate our landlords and our tenants and avoid 50% or more of the issues that we have on a daily basis or a yearly basis. Um, code enforcement and inspection programs work. They're in place in the largest cities in this county, San Rafael and Nevado. They work. Streamlined building inspection process and options that increase our supply of housing work. Uh, what doesn't work is medi mandatory mediation and rent limits. More rent increase, uh, the proposed language as I see it would result in more rent increases to more tenants. Every landlord will raise their rent 5% every year. It's not happening. Right now it's not happening. We're hearing the extreme examples of tenants that have been treated unfairly um, but there's as many examples of landlords that are being soft and gentle and fair with their tenants. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, President Arnold, Supervisors. For the record, my name is Andy Fegley. I'm here on behalf of the Marin Association of Realtors. Uh, here today before you to signal our uh, support for the spirit and intent of the mandatory mediation ordinance. However, uh, we feel that going from introduction to adoption in less than two weeks is a bit of a tight uh, time frame in order to receive and apply thorough and thoughtful input from stakeholders. You've heard from several of the stakeholders here today. Um, we also believe that there is much work to be done on this now that this ordinance has been in, in the light of day for a couple of days, we've had a chance to be able to look at it, and I believe you can go back to the groups you've already spoken with um, to get some more input on that. Um, to do this, we have to measure twice and cut once. Um, to pass an ordinance right now at this breakneck speed is a total disservice to the process. Um, again, we agree with the spirit and intent, uh, and we look forward to working with you to create an ordinance that is the right fit for all of Marin. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, supervisors. My name is Jack Wilkinson. I've lived in San Rafael for a little over 40 years. I own real estate, and in fact, I've invested a significant amount of my money in real estate to live on. I live on rents. I get Social Security, but rents are nice. Raising rents, to me, is to increase the income that I get. But I don't raise rents on tenants just arbitrarily, because if you lose a tenant, it takes a long time to get that money back. So most of the landlords I know, and I know quite a few, I think Scott would uh, concur with that, don't just raise rents to get the money, they raise rents to maintain the property. And when any government body comes into the, uh, the situation, the economic situation, you, Damon, with uh, what a, a degree in economics, you said, or you studied economics, Understand that distortion occurs when a third party steps into a free choice, and that distortion creates a shortage in housing all over the place. It takes a long time for these things to happen, 
but it's a distortion, an unnecessary distortion. There are already state laws that give tenants quite a bit of time to stay in an apartment even when they're not paying rent. I know, I've just been through this where a tenant had the state law on his side three months, trashed the apartment, didn't pay any rent before we finally got him out. It's a very, it's a difficult process and a process I hate to go through. So mediation is fine. I don't really have a problem with bringing people to the table in mediation. I also serve as a mediator. But we have to be careful that we don't distort the market and create a problem bigger than the one that we have. I would suggest that the county work with the cities and look at some of these small vacant impill parcels that we have and possibly change the density allowed and the height requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Gail Connolly, uh, Larkspur. Um, I agree with most of everything that the landlords have said. I've been a landlord for over 35 years here in Marin. Um, I do raise rents occasionally and I keep them moderate because I do not want vacancies. Vacancies are expensive. Um, there is a lack of affordable housing, um, but how many people want to live here? If you look at the housing that's available at Point Reyes, there's a hundred and must be about 150 houses in the old um, Coast Guard station sitting vacant. You've got all the storefronts in San Rafael and other cities that could be converted if you do the zoning to housing. Um, the most of the streets are one way, uh, one lane, one way, and the traffic is, of course, horrible, which everyone has mentioned. Um, so even if you live near or put new housing in near the freeway, it's still, um, you can't get on the freeway between four and seven if you live in Larkspur. It's almost impossible. So um, I don't think we can accommodate everyone who wants to live here. And uh, if we did, I think no one would want to live here. It would be too crowded because um, everyone wants to be here. Um, I was thrilled when my children had jobs and were able to live here and not have to move to another community. Um, but it's the same, and other friends I have, their children had to leave. They, some of them come to San Francisco from other communities to get jobs. Um, so that's part of the housing problem. We have wonderful jobs here, but don't kill the whole thing and have the companies move out because they're, um, they can pay their employees well and they do. And you see even houses are being overbid. So it's the way we are, but please don't restrict the rental, the landlords, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else would like to speak? All right, I'm gonna close this and bring it back to staff. Do you wanna respond to any of the comments that you uh, heard? I, I would say that we heard from a large segment of our landlord community who probably would not be affected by the ordinance that, is that are in front of you. There are folks who have um, personal relationships with their tenants and long-standing relationships with their tenants. And so probably most of the folks that we heard from would not be impacted by this ordinance. And so we're really trying to reach the folks who are not in this room and who are not part of this conversation and um, are, you know, have a substantial number of the homes in this county that are rented out. Um, I would agree with uh, Mr. Gerber's statement that we need better data, um, which is why we have included in the ordinance one of the provisions in the addendum that it would be a data collection um, so that we can have more accurate data <coughs> that your board can respond to um, the rental market, you know, that we can have more accurate data and you can see what's going on in the rental market. Um, other than that, I think that we heard a lot of the testimony that we've heard in the past. I w would also like to remind you and the members of the public who are here that your board has been looking at this issue for a couple of years. I think that it first came in front of you in July of 2016 when we started talking about mandatory mediation. So this is not 
new to the conversation. Um, and Just Cause has been on the table since we first brought these back to you in 2015. So these are, these are issues that we have been um, working on and that you, your board has been considering for some time. All right, and I want to ask the board if they uh, to uh, if they have questions. I'm going to call on Supervisor Sears. Thank you. Yeah, just a couple of questions. One of our the first speakers um, had expressed a concern that the five percent reduction in services does not address flood, fire, and other uh, dramatic impacts on a property that landlord might need to address. Would you like to comment on that concern, either consultant or Lely or whoever? Sure. So the um, the comment was concerned that they would be in that the landlord would be in violation or potentially owe relocation payments to a tenant if, through some sort of natural disaster or other acts outside of their control, services were reduced. Um, the relocation provisions don't apply to service reductions; they only apply um, if if that portion of the ordinance even were to be included in what this board is considering. Uh, it's only proposed to apply to actual rent increases, not service reductions. Um, there is a provision in the ordinance as proposed where a service reduction that is valued at at least 5% um, could trigger a request for mediation from the tenant if there's not a corresponding reduction in that tenant's rent. But there's no penalty or violation that a landlord would be in um, if a if there were a legitimate reason that the landlord couldn't provide those services, either the tenant may not choose to request mediation or that would be something that they would discuss, but there's there's no penalty associated with a service reduction, um, especially one that is caused by an act out of the control of the landlord. Great, thank you for that. And let me ask you another question. Um, the staff report provided some sample uh, ordinances from other jurisdictions, and I wondered if I didn't see it in those ordinances, I might have missed it, but whether there were other examples where jurisdictions set a particular number of units to which a mandatory mediation or just cause eviction would not apply so that they set a threshold. Are there examples out there you could talk about? Yeah, there, so jurisdictions, there's a range of ways that jurisdictions appro approach the application of mediation um, and also in more robust rent control programs. Um, some, like Fremont, for example, um, would recently adopted a mediation program, and they have that apply to all of the rental properties in their jurisdiction. Um, where you see the thresholds come in more commonly are when there's a more robust rent stabilization program, um, and then not only are the restrictions from Costa-Hawkins applicable, but um, many jurisdictions will incorporate exclusions for duplexes or uh, landlords that own very small numbers of units. Great, thank you. That's helpful. Lily, did you want to I, add? I, I was just going to add that um, we were modeling this after, you know, following your direction from the source of income right. where you wanted the widest applicability. Mm -hmm. And we had originally come, to come with that ordinance with a provision that exempted owner-occupied um, and you asked us to come back and have a wider applicability. Right. I was and just so about to say that right. the, that was our suggestion. Right. So, yeah, we would both yeah. remember it the same. So and my, and my last question or just offer, uh, Lily or Brian, Brian, perhaps you'd like to talk about what the county's doing with respect to the, to the, uh, the Coast Guard station for one of our last speakers mm -hmm. who pointed that out as a potential for affordable housing. Yeah. Um, thank you. The Coast Guard, uh, as um, you know, and some of the members of the public may know, is there was legislation passed um, that required the Coast Guard to enter into negotiations with the county and sell the property to the county. And we have been working with the, um, with the Coast Guard for a while now on that process. Um, we've had a um, appraisal done. So uh, we are supposed to, they're supposed to sell it to us based on fair market value. An appraisal was done, which is being evaluated by the Coast Guard. And so we're in the process of purchasing that with the intent that it become permanently deed-restricted affordable housing. And we're looking forward to the day that happens. Thank you. OK, a Supervisor <coughs> Rodoni. I have questions. Questions? OK, go great. No, right. OK, go ahead. OK. Um, good afternoon. I did listen, and I think that's legal in the car uh, on my way here. So 
amazing, <laughs> plugged into my phone. Um, so I think I caught everything, but I had a couple questions that didn't get asked, and actually one of them relates to the scope of what a mandatory mediation would apply to, and I actually I think Damon asked for clarification. So as proposed, it would apply to any dwelling unit from JDUs to ADUs if there's a kitchen and a bathroom and a bedroom. Um, and, and Correct. I, okay. And I, I just want to put this out there. I, I had some concerns about that, especially given given uh, that we are trying to encourage folks to actually um, create JDUs and ADUs. In fact, I believe we adopted, did we, did we pass something this morning when mm -hmm. I wasn't here? Mm -hmm. um, an incentive program um, to get people to create JDUs within their homes. And, and I suspect most, and, and so as part of question? that, yes it is, okay. as part of that action, um, there was associated with it a requirement that the re the unit not if they took advantage of this incentive that the unit not that go on the market as it can't be a short term rental that it has to be a regular rental yes do I mm -hmm. so here's my here's my question and and I would or and I would appreciate your thoughts about it well we're if we're trying to encourage um, additions of housing stock for potentially folks who are not have not been landlords before, frankly. And I am concerned about the perception of anything we do, perhaps discouraging new, cr discouraging folks from actually um, creating new units and trying out um, being landlords and renting out part of their property. And I just wonder if you have any thoughts on that in terms of the scope of applicability. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a good. I think one of the things that you said about, you know, that this would may often be folks who have never been landlords is maybe one of the reasons why it would be most important that this apply to them. You know, this would be an opportunity, you know, it, it, this would be a chance where those two folks who were living in the same place, right, in the same building most likely, especially if it was a JDU, um, that they could sit down and have a conversation about a rent increase. Right, so there could be a neutral facilitator, and they may not have the expertise and the experience that many of the landlords that you heard from today have. Um, and so it may be even more necessary for somebody who's living in a situation like that to have that opportunity um, to be able to work with somebody who's a neutral facilitator who can help with that conversation and with that process. I also think that as um, we are relying on JDUs and ADUs uh, as one of our sources of affordable housing in a lot of different ways that we need to make sure that they are accessible to people and that they remain affordable. And, you know, I think, so whatever we can do to ensure that that happens, including, you know, ensuring that they don't become short-term rentals and um, <coughs> making that it so that if they, they are rented affordably, they remain rem so and that, you know, they can have that conversation with their landlord. Okay, and then just to clarify, the 5% uh, um, trigger that we've, or the, the over 5% that we've identified does not require then a tenant, that a tenant or a landlord request mediation. It, it just, it, it exists as the, as the trigger, for, so to speak, if either one wants to take advantage of that. Exactly, it's optional. So you, I think that you... You know, if there's a landlord who has not raised the rent for a number of years and both the tenant and landlord are aware that they're significantly under market and they raise it, um, you know, 7%, there's no requirement that the landlord or the tenant seek mediation. It's just if, if they feel like this is something that they couldn't accommodate and wouldn't be able to do. Okay, and then on, I'm sorry to leave it, uh, on page 11, of the staff report is the section 595060, anti-harassment and other prohibited activities. And I believe that's part of the <coughs> main part of the ordinance, not an addendum, yes? Yes. So, um, and I, and I, aren't a lot of these items covered and aren't tenants protected through state and federal laws? And just if you could talk about these items, because this is not something we discussed, I don't think, in our subcommittee as part of, of the ordinance. And I don't necessarily have any, any objection to it. I'm just, I want to I also understand where what we're asking for is duplicative, it, 
duplicates what's already exists for tenant protections in state or federal law, and then also um, how how this would be enforced. Which number, Katie? On, I'm on, um, on page, page seven of fifteen. No, okay. it's eleven of the ordinance. Yeah, oh. the anti-harassment provision. Yeah, sec section five nine five zero six zero of the. I said eleven. <laughs> yeah. So um, the provisions were included. Um, in part just to um, make sure that tenants and landlords were both informed of their various obligations and the protections against anti-harassment, some of which um, the Civil Code already addresses and um, some of which are specific to this ordinance. But I think that including the full list of measures here um, is a way to make sure that um, it's all included in one package and will reassure people who might seek to use the program that uh, they have these rights available to them and that they are um, not exposing themselves to more problems by asking to talk about a proposed rent increase. Um, in terms of enforcement, um, the section 595070 on page 12 of the proposed ordinance um, talk about the civil remedies that would be available, but um, ultimately it would be up to an individual tenant to um, enforce their rights under the anti-harassment provisions of this ordinance. Um, the let's see, the uh, county does also have the ability to um, impose civil liability um, in the amounts shown in the ordinance. I think it's it's a $200 for the first offense and up to $400 um, in the event that there's that the county uh, uses its discretion to enforce these actions <coughs> but the primary enforcement mechanism would be um, the tenant seeking the civil uh, relief that's provided to them under the ordinance and if, if I can add if you look at the bottom of page 8 of 15 um, under good faith participation, that's where it incorporates the anti-harassment provisions. It says, good faith participation includes the affirmative duty of the landlord to refrain from any harassment or other prohibited activity described in section 5.95.060, uh, which is the one that we were just discussing, mm. and refrain from an unlawful, unlawful detainer proceeding while the parties are engaged in proceedings under this chapter, accepting only those actions authorized by blah, 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 blah. By yes, I think blah, that's blah. a good clarification. Yeah, so basically it serves a purpose. Right, but but well. but these are some of these items are exist without this ordinance. That's I think that the that's point. correct. And, think and it speaks to it's and and frankly I think that should be iterated in here or reiterated, reemphasized because it speaks to the fact that there are protections that exist today that are difficult for potent tenants to exercise or they don't know about, and it really costs. I mean, it. it there are state and federal laws that prevent discrimination, and we need the education component of whatever we do is really important. And, and we need the, the process to be taken seriously, that good faith and, and uh, that going into it. And there is, um, on the flip side of that, there is the savings clause in um, paragraph B of that section 595060 on page 12 of the ordinance that says that Nothing uh, about these anti-harassment provisions keeps a landlord from exercising their right to evict a tenant in conformance with the law. So it, it um, does both of those things. It, it highlights the protections that tenants have while also uh, reinforcing that these don't preempt or preclude the landlord's ability to enforce their property rights as well. Okay. Those are my questions. Thank okay, you. any more questions from the board? And I'm going to call on the members of the subcommittee to make their comments first, and I'm going to go with Damon. Well, thank you, Madam President, and, and thank you again to members of the public who came out and shared your time and your, your thoughts. Um, again, really want to thank staff um, for the good work here. As was noted, it's, it's been over a couple of years uh, when we stopped to think about it. 
And particularly my uh, subcommittee member, Supervisor Rice, glad your uh, flight arrived back in time to join us. So I'm going to just share a few thoughts um, uh, for the body. Um, we have been looking at this issue in depth and meeting with many stakeholders. Uh, we have learned from working with landlords and listening to tenants. Many Marin landlords are smart business people with high ethical standards, and I think we heard that again uh, from their testimony today. Our local mom and pop landlords tell us that they want to keep their units occupied and don't want to evict tenants. They strive to keep their rents reasonable and to keep good tenants. There's agreement with the tenant community that most landlords do play fair, do treat their tenants with respect, and evict only when absolutely necessary. The goal is that this ordinance will not unduly impact the good landlords. With this proposed ordinance, we seek to build on the current programs to achieve success towards solutions. In particular, we're striving to address two issues that the tenant community is concerned about and that we've heard loud and clear, high rents and habitability. Put another way, the goal here is to address specific problems with targeted and what we believe are effective solutions. We want to be careful that we do not lose rental units or increase rents. I believe that mandatory mediation of disputes between landlords and tenants when there is a significant rent increase will provide a way to resolve issues allowing people to remain in their homes. I want to ensure that the housing units we have are habitable. As someone uh, mentioned today, uh, when we met with tenants at a forum sponsored by the Marin Organizing Committee, and there were over 300 people there, uh, we heard a great deal about issues of substandard living conditions and fear of retaliation for complaining about those conditions, if not outright discrimination in many cases. We are directing staff to enhance code enforcement. That's one of the key recommendations we're making. We further directed the county code enforcement work with Novato and San Rafael to see what joint efforts can be established to improve code enforcement across the county. Most rental units are in those two cities. The goal is safe and livable housing and keeping people housed free of discrimination and retaliation. State law currently has strong laws prohibiting retaliation based on complaints uh, regarding habitability of a unit or for discrimination. I want landlords and tenants to know their rights and responsibilities under these laws. Education in multiple languages, listening, listing tenants' rights, and contact information for someone in code enforcement is crucial. A robust website, ongoing education classes would go a long way to educate both landlords and tenants about the law. There's a great deal of anecdotal information from both landlords and tenants regarding the outcome of any rental housing ordinance. The county doesn't collect or maintain data, as we heard again, on evictions or rent increases. To shape future rulemaking, we need data and have directed staff to explore how to collect data so that we can make evidence-based decisions. I'm concerned with the unintended consequences of any, any resolution uh, the board passes. This morning, as was also noted, the board passed an ordinance waiving permitting fees for junior accessory dwelling units when the units are long-term rentals. In addition to the landlord-tenant partnership, income protection ordinance, bolstering code enforcement, preserving low-income housing, and improving education, mandatory mediation appears to be a win-win. Our district attorney's office program reports an 80% success rate in resolving disputes between landlords and tenants. We don't have to set up a new system. We have one that is working with qualified mediators. 
Mediation is a proven way of resolving disputes, allowing some people to remain in their homes and allowing some people additional time to find another unit. Just cause is a big step with a significant potential for unintended consequences. Jurisdictions in the Bay Area that have just cause without rent control are relatively new and either don't collect data or haven't been collecting data long enough to show whether the just cause ordinance is effective in keeping people in their homes and stabilizing rent. The evidence we have seen is inconclusive at best in jurisdictions like the city of San Diego that have a just cause ordinance on the books. So the jury is out. It is not clear at all that just cause would serve as a solution to, again, those two main problems we have identified of high rents and inventory and habitability. Let's try the menu of steps that we have. Um, I know that the steps we've taken are now proposing won't be a silver bullet because we don't have any existing or we don't have any excess housing stock in Marin. But we hope that this will stabilize or help to stabilize the housing stock that we do have. As we've seen today, neither landlords or tenants are completely happy with what we're proposing here today. But it appears to be something both sides can live with. Thank you. Supervisor Rice. Yeah, I'll keep it very short. Um, Damon and I worked um, closely on this and did a lot of work with the subcommittee and a lot of our own research and this housing issue is extremely complex and um, I think Damon stated well um, I think in our research and what we saw their communities doing and and to the degree to which we understand this market and which we don't understand completely um, and that's why this data collection piece is so so important um, the the risk of unintended consequences that potentially further constrain the housing market to me are um, is is a is a big concern, and um, I do feel that what is being proposed as part of uh, the mandatory mediation and that these additional programs around a beefed up inspection program, coordination with the large cities, the education and outreach and data collection are absolutely essential um, to get under our, put under our belts and really see how things work and understand the market just that much better before taking a further step um, in, in around just cause or rent control, which frankly, philosophically, I, I don't um, agree with and don't believe they are effective tools in the long term. Um, but I am, I'm really satisfied with the work um, done to date and I know this has been a big um, lift for staff and appreciate all the work you've done on it. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Sears. Great, thank you so much. So, you know, over the course of the last several years, I've heard from many of the constituents in my districts in Southern Marin, uh, these are long, long time residents of the county, 12 years, 15 years, 17, 20, 25 years, uh, about their being pushed out by the dramatic rent oh, increases. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'll get closer to the microphone. Thank you for that reminder. I thought I was so loud. Um, so e this is a story, I think, of dramatic rent increases that really have been putting members of our community in jeopardy that's not new. And I also know that we have many, many good landlords in this county. Uh, we have many good landlords who are in the room with us today, and we've had a tremendous collaboration between our Marin Housing Authority, the county, and many of our landlords in expanding the Section 8 voucher program uh, and creating opportunities for those folks in our county who are really at our lowest economic levels. Mm -hmm. And that's been tremendously important and we really appreciate that. But we also have many people who are, are vulnerably housed who are not just at the lowest economic levels in our county. And I want to be clear, you know, this is, as Alili said, I think we started this conversation back in 2006, although I sure feel like it was 2015. And one of the, I think it really might have been 2015, but, um, but regardless, it's been quite a while. And one of the first things that we looked at was rent control. For the folks who've written in and, and said today that this is rent control in disguise, that's not true. We looked at rent control, and our board decided that that was not a step that we felt would be beneficial to our county. And so then we looked at, well, what can we do? 
and what should we do and what are the needs and the issues that really are concerning us. There is no question that we need more affordable housing. Um, but we're not going to get that affordable housing in the next couple of weeks. I wish we would, but we're not. And in the meantime, we have a displacement and a habitability problem that's really significant. And I think we need something to do something about it. We've gotten a lot of emails and letters, as well as the, the folks, everyone here is today, who's been sharing their comments. And those emails and letters say, no, you're doing too much. No, you're doing too little. I really feel like Goldilocks. I'm trying to find that nice, warm, not too hot, not too cold <laughs> solution here. And I, I, you know, it's, it's tough. I think we, everyone in this room recognizes that there is no perfect solution. Um, but you know, at the peril of finding myself in agreement with Dave Curry, I'm going to say <laughs> that something really does need to be done. I think we all agree with that. And, I've, and something needs to be done, and it needs to be done now. And we can't wait for efforts that many of us really support of finding more affordable housing. And I also agree with what staff said earlier, which is that most of the landlords in this room who are really good landlords will not be affected um, by what is being proposed here today. So I very much support mandatory mediation. I also support the proposed inspection program, uh, data collection, and a having a hotline <laughs> for renters and property owners. I think that would be tremendously important. Right now, people don't know who to ask a question of, and so they end up sending me an email, and that's never all that satisfying, because <laughs> I'm not an expert. Um, so I think all those are great. I also think we should move ahead with just cause for termination. I think there's not a benefit <laughs> to waiting. So I will stop there. Okay, now Supervisor Verdillo. <coughs> um, thank you. Um, I too want to reach out to the landlords in the room, both for and against these ordinances. Um, you do a great deal for our rental community, and I do believe that whatever ordinance we pass, most of you will not be impacted by them. I think it's important that whatever we do next week on the 12th, that we follow through with the data collection that we've mentioned today, that we need to do a better job with education of our tenants and our landlords about what are the rules that they need to play by and what are the rules available to all of them. I do support the subcommittee's request related to uh, additional approaches, which are some of the things I mentioned earlier or above. Um, I think they're really important, regardless of what we do next Tuesday, to move forward with, with all those things. Um, you know, given the North Bay fires and already tight rental market, we have rents that are $4,000 for a three-bedroom home. You need $96,000 of income to qualify for a one-bedroom in Marin. Um, and we need to recognize, or I need to recognize probably, that we're not going to build our way out of this problem in the, in the near future anyway. And even with JDUs and ADUs, um, which will offer immediate help, we still need to consider other solutions. And I think uh, Raleigh said it best, there's no perfect solution for this, but I think not trying some solutions is a, is a mistake. I appreciate the hard work of our subcommittee, Supervisor Conley and Supervisor Rice, and I support the rental, rental housing dispute or the mandatory mediation recommendations, but I have some doubts about its impact on preventing displacement and preventing rental housing, um, uh, preserving rental housing, I'm sorry. I look forward to the data collection to prove that I would be wrong, but I also um, understand that the residential landlord and tenant relations uh, ordinance, just cause eviction, uh, could be the most impactful ordinance that we would require or pass, and I think it involves less government oversight too. Um, having both mandatory mediation and just cause eviction might be the best choice for our rental market right now but I do understand that the recommendation is to postpone that uh, for up to 12 months. I probably uh, would consider that, but it would be a much shorter period that I'd want to bring that opportunity back. I do think it would be good to move forward, at least staff level, with a just cause of eviction ordinance to lay it out exactly how it would, what it would look like. I think that would be useful um, that if we could see what that would look like and how it would apply to Marin. Um, I'm a little less enthused about the proposal about the relocation. Not that I don't like it in principle, but I just think we haven't thought it out well enough mm -hmm. to make sure we don't have negative impacts from that in a, in a, in a much uh, different way than we intend. 
So um, if we were to accept that on the 12th, I think we needed some, some revisions and some more clarity to that to make sure it, it, the impacts um, work for what we need them to work for and they don't penalize landlords for things that they would be doing improvements or other things, for example. So um, thank you for that. Thank yeah. you, sure. I want to thank the subcommittee for your lo long, hard job, and I want to thank staff for the work that, that you have done. Um, I support the committee's recommendation in approval, approval of mandated mediation. Um, I don't, th I think the addendum, the three items on the addendum haven't been fully baked. Um, I am especially concerned about listing the public um, and for some of the reasons that, that uh, the woman in the audience said, uh, we need to look at that. We need to look at that more. There, there are some, uh, there are some problems there and, and I, I'm not prepared to uh, support the addendum. Um, I'm, I'm not prepared to take on just cause today. I want to see how this, this goes with the mandatory mediation, but I'm not wedded to 12 months. So um, we can, let's look at that. As Supervisor Rodoni said, the fires in Sonoma have created an alternate universe for Marin County, and our housing supply is critical. Um, so this action I believe that we're taking today is a beginning in helping solve that problem. So um, I am now prepared to, uh, to take a motion establishing a rental housing dis Wait, we have to have okay. the second reading. Yeah. We're taking the first reading. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, yeah. no, yeah. And, and Madam President, yep. I don't think the subcommittee is necessarily wedded to 12 months either. I think that was in consultation with staff. Yeah. Also getting head shaking at me. Um, so we're, okay. Um, I think it's that kind of, how long does it take to, you know, see what's worked. Um, so if someone has a recommendation on an alternative time period, I think we're open. Well, let, uh, let, let's see when we come back for the meeting or in a month or two, let's see how, you know, what we think or how it's going because I don't know. How, I just think if, if it could be less than 12 months, fine. I, I just wanted to add to clarify that um, some direction on the addendum um, so that we know what should be included in the um, in the ordinance that we bring back to you on the 12th for the merit hearing are you talking about the three the, the three points the, yes the well so do you want to uh, what do you, I, mean, I don't support it, okay. that. Okay, right it now. sounded like there, I heard a lot of support for data collection, and I don't know is if it, that was that is number one. I support number that, one. That I was don't for the two and three. Understood. That was for the okay. second yes. support, too. You don't like the, the data, data collection? No. I think, I think there's a real problem with that. Yeah. With this being publicized for legal but reasons, there's problem, I think. President Arnold, if I could um, interject. On the, the data collection, the information that we provided you in the staff report lays out uh, a good list of what would be included in uh, some type of solicitation to landlords to collect specific data. What we'd like to um, further advise you on are the mechanisms that we believe may be available that we can use to collect that data. How do we push out uh, a form? How do we collect it back? As well as mechanisms we can put in place to ensure that we're effectively receiving that data from all the landlords who are affected by the data so collection registration. Give us the mechanism. So that would be something we would report back to you on as well in the first quarter, if not sooner, in, in 2018. Okay. I, I just also wanted to clarify that if the concern that your concern on item um, the second item on the addendum was around um, renters personal information mm -hmm. being released That's that fine. would not be the case it would be the name landlord the, the, the it wouldn't be their name it would be the address of mm -hmm. them and the rents mm -hmm. levels that went with them but it wouldn't be an individual's uh, the individual renter's name wouldn't be attached to that well, okay. data well, request why at all. We hear from the board. How many of the, bo the, the board members want to include those three addendums along with approving of the mandatory mediation? 
You know, I, I would suggest that we adopt the mandatory me mediation, the, the, or the, uh, uh, set the first read, or do the right. hearing read and conduct, bring it back on the 12th, um, not including the addendum piece yeah. right. as a standalone action. Okay. So I'm ready to move that. Okay. Right. Second. I don't think we could come back legally on a second reading if we change the ordinance significantly to add in any of these items anyway. So we'd be mm -hmm. coming, right? We'd be coming back on a second That's reading on the ordinance as proposed, and then we could bring back additional information on these other three mm -hmm. items. But that's a substantive change. We think I'm that by at our lawyers. Okay, I, um, we think that by including it in the addendum, that we did that so that your board could act on them, since it was a, included as an attachment to so the addendum. So Brian Washington. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just talk about that. Yeah, so if we're adopting, if you were to do a first reading uh, without the addendum today, mm -hmm. then you, you could not adopt the addendum in mm -hmm. the second reading. You would have to subsequently okay. do a first reading of the addendum. Right, thank you. But we could adopt it later. All right, so then uh, oh, we can uh, well, the motion, the motion has been made. And well, I'll second it, but and I just it's, wanna, on, can it's I on it without I want to clarify for a second. We, I think there's some sentiment that people would like to have further discussion and perhaps yes. more information about the three items proposed in the addendum. We can have that conversation at our next meeting, but the second reading would be on the ordinance as proposed pursuant to the motion. Just I want to make sure everybody's on the same page yeah. about where we're heading. Yep. So the, right. so this was a <coughs> approval of the, of the first reading <coughs> on the proposal without the addendum. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion carried. Diane. Ordinance of the Bryn County Board of Supervisors adding County and Bryn Code of Ordinances Chapter 5.95 Rental Housing Dispute Resolution. Okay, great. All right. Just to be just to be sure, I think everyone agreed though we need to do data collection in some way. Yes. And you well, need to come back. Not necessarily oh. that that uh, that recommendation, but I think I think some data collection, some mechanism for collecting it. Because this seems to only be a start of that information, what you're recommending here. So I think you need to flush that out um, sooner than later about data collection. I think we would be looking, I would be looking for on all th those three, those three items under, under uh, housing subcommittee recommendations, mm -hmm. one, two, and, and all the bullets. I mean, there's some fleshing out that has to be done of all of those. The data collection piece overlaps with the addendum, mm -hmm. but there's more to more to for staff to work on there in terms of fleshing out those programs right and then we and we will also have additional conversation about the timing of the just cause provision yes, we'll right? Right. right okay so uh the, we've had a motion and a second i want to thank everyone for coming today for your concern and for your patience and uh, we are adjourned